page 87, section entitled Forgiveness. The spiritual growth we get from making direct amends often depends on how much we put into our spiritual preparation. We start with getting rid of any beliefs that we have that, we have that may be causing us to hesitate or might inhibit our ability to approach our amends with humility, acceptance, and faith. Something that seems to be a problem for many of us is that we often owe amends to people who also have harmed us. This may be a parent or other relative who abused us, a friend who let us down somehow, an employer who didn't treat us fairly, and so on. We've done a lot of work in the previous steps to separate what they did from us, to us from what we, we did to them. We know exactly what our part in these situations was, and we know why we are making amends. As we prepare to make direct, face-to-face -face amends, we need to be perfectly clear that we are making amends for our part in these conflicts. We're not making amends to coerce or manipulate a reciprocal amends. We're not responsible for cleaning up anything not on our side of the street. Keeping this in mind throughout our amends will help keep us focused on our purpose, no matter how our amends are received and whether or not we receive amends in return for harm done to us. Sometimes, though, the wrong done to us was so extreme that it's better to postpone making our amends until a later time. For instance, many of us were emotionally, physically, or sexually abused as children by an older relative. Though we had no part in that situation and owe no amends because of it, we may have stolen money or caused physical or property damage to the relative at some other time. So we owe amends for the theft, physical harm, or vandalism. The question that arises in this situation is not whether to make amends, but when and how. Page 88. It may take a long time before we are ready to make an appropriate amends, and that's okay. We wait and we work with our sponsor. We need to try to forgive the people who have harmed us before we make amends to them. We don't want to sit down with someone with whom we're furious and try to make amends. Our attitude will be apparent no matter how much we try to hide it. Amends are a time when it's not usually very productive to act as if. There's a big difference between situations where we harmed against our will and situations in which our, behavioral, our behavior contributed to the way we were treated. For many of our amends, when, we were angry at, when we're angry at someone who treated us badly, we need to ask ourselves if anything we did could have caused them to treat us as they did. For instance, we may be enraged at our parents for not trusting us to go out on the weekend to an N.A. dance, but when we think about how many times we've lied before where we were going and always used drugs wherever we went, it may help us to see that our parents can't help treating us with mistrust and that we may have to spend more time earning their trust. Or we may have been selfish and withdrawn with some of our friends day after day, week after week. Then, when we needed them and they weren't available, we became angry and resentful. Reminding ourselves that we engineered much of our own misery may help us forgive those who hurt us. Another way we may find forgiveness for those who hurt us is by getting out of ourselves and thinking about what other people's lives are like. Maybe the people who hurt us did so because they had problems that made them less sensitive to the needs of others. Maybe our sponsor didn't return our phone calls for a week because his youngest child was in jail. Maybe our best friend told us our relationship was unhealthy and we should get out of it immediately following her own divorce. Maybe our employer didn't praise our work because he was worried about being able to meet payroll that week. We usually feel petty and small when we find out that a person we resented had some painful problem. Maybe we can be more forgiving and loving if we just assume from the start that most people's intentions are good and if someone is unkind to us, it may be because he or she is in a lot of pain and very distracted by it. First and foremost, preparing ourselves spiritually to make amends requires that we tap into our higher powers, strength, and love. Contemplating a loving God's forgiveness of the times when we hurt people will help us approach people with an attitude of love and forgiveness. Using, using our higher power as a sort of protective force will ensure that negative reactions to our amends don't cause us to lose hope. We can center ourselves by praying and meditating before each amends. Questions. Do I owe amends to people who have also harmed me? Have I forgotten them all? Which ones have I not have I forgiven them all? Which ones have I not forgiven yet? Have I tried tried all of the above ways of generating a spirit of forgiveness? What does my sponsor say about it? Page 89, making section entitled Making Amends. Now we're ready to make our amends. We've discussed each person or institution on our eight-step list with our sponsor and made a plan for how we would go about making each amends. We've talked to the God of our understanding and we've prayed for the willingness, serenity, courage, and wisdom to go through with our amends. 
Now we need to follow through with our amends. We need to continue amending our behavior, and we need to keep whatever commitments we've made to the people on our amends list. This is where it can get difficult. When we first make an amends, we're usually feeling as if we could float away on a cloud of freedom. We feel a heightened sense of self-respect and the initial euphoria that comes along with the disappearance of a large chunk of remorse. We feel like good people, like we're on equal fitting, footing with the rest of humanity. This feeling is extremely powerful and it's our first time feeling and if it's our first time feeling it, it might seem like more than we can handle. We shouldn't worry. The feelings won't be so intense for long, though there will be some permanent change in our feelings about ourselves. After the first glow of making amends fades, we'll face the truly challenging part of making amends, the follow through. For instance, a year after we approach a lending institution to which we owe money and promise to pay back a certain amount every month, we may not find it spiritually inspiring to hand over a portion of every hard-earned paycheck, especially if we're going to be making the same payment for several more years. Asking ourselves one simple question should help us continue with our amends. How free do we want to be? To continue with all aspects of our recovery, making amends included, makes our freedom grow day by day. Question. Are there amends with which I'm having trouble following through? What am I doing to recommit myself to making these amends? It is not necessarily a, comfortable and com a comforting and comfortable process to make amends. The steps aren't designed to make us happy and comfortable. Without also making us grow, without also making us grow, the fear, the risk, and the feeling of vulnerability that come with making amends may be so uncomfortable for us that the memory keeps us from repeating the behavior that led us to having to make amends. We hear often around NA that it gets better. It is us. We get better. We become better people. We become less willing to engage in destructive behavior because we are aware of the cost in human misery, both our own and that of, that of those around us. Our self-centeredness is replaced by an awareness of other people and concern about their lives. Where we were indifferent, we begin to care. Where we were selfish, we begin to be selfless. Where we were angry, we begin to be forgiving. Our love and tolerance also extend to ourselves. We explore some of the issues surrounding making amends to ourselves in step eight. Now it's time to recognize how we've already begun making amends to ourselves and perhaps make some plans to continue or take on some new things. Page 90. We begin making amends to ourselves for our addiction when we stopped using drugs and started working the steps. Just these two acts will go a long way toward healing the damage we did to our own spirits. We may have to do some other things to heal the damage we did to our bodies and minds. There are many ways we can begin taking care of our physical health from diet to exercise to medical treatment. Whatever ways we choose will need to fit our, fit our personal needs and desires. The damage we did to our minds may be healed in some measure by pursuing knowledge in the future. A return to school or just learning something new will help us repair years of mental neglect. Question: What are my immediate plans for making amends to myself? Do I have any long-range goals that might also fit as amends to myself? What are they? What can I do to follow through? Spiritual Principles In the ninth step, we will focus on humility, love, and forgiveness. The humility we've gained in this step has resulted from getting a good look at the damage we did to others and accepting responsibility for it. We acknowledge to ourselves, yes, this is what I've done. I'm responsible for the harm I caused and for making it right. We may have been led to this awareness by the experience of having someone tearfully tell us how much we hurt them. We may have found ourselves on the receiving end of some hurt we had inflicted on someone else and been so jarred by such an experience that we were able to see on a deeper level how we hurt people. Then again, it may have been only the process of the previous steps, coupled with the experience of making amends that led us to experience increased humility. Questions. Have I accepted responsibility for the harm I caused and for repairing that harm? What experience have I had that led me to see the harm I caused more clearly? How has that contributed to an increase in my humility? It becomes much easier to practice the spiritual principle of love in step nine, though we've been probably we've probably been working on practicing it throughout our recovery. By this time, we've eliminated many of the destructive views and feelings we had, making room for love in our lives. As we become filled with love, we find ourselves compared, compelled to share it by nurturing our relationships and building new ones, and by selflessly sharing our recovery, our time, our resources, and above all, ourselves with those in need. Question, 
How am I giving of myself or being of service to others? As we experience being forgiven, we begin to see the value in extending that to others. This motivates us to practice the principle of forgiveness as much as possible. Recognizing our own humanness gives us the capacity to forgive others and not be as judgmental as we have been in the past. It becomes second nature for us to give other people the benefit of the doubt. Page 91. We no longer suspect vile motives and sneaky conspiracies are at play in every situation over which we don't have full control. We're aware that we usually mean well and so extend that belief and so extend that belief to others. When someone does harm to uh, does harm us, we're aware that holding resentments only serves to rob us of our own peace and serenity, so we tend to forgive sooner rather than later. Question: What are the benefits to me of practicing the principle of forgiveness? What are some situations in which I've been able to practice this principle? For what have I forgiven myself? section entitled Moving On. Many of us find it helpful to reflect on our amends after making each one. Some of us do this by writing about how it felt to make the amends and what we learned from the experience. How did Question, how did it feel to make this amends? What did I learn from it? Freedom seems to be the word that most clearly describes the essence of step nine. It seems to sum up the relief from guilt and shame, the lessening of our obsession with ourselves, and the increased ability to appreciate what's going around us as it's happening. We start being less consumed with ourselves, more able to be fully present in all of our relationships. We begin, begin to be able to, to just be in a room full of people without trying to control the room or dominate every conversation. We start thinking of our past, specifically our addiction, as a gold mine of experience to share with people we've trying to, we're trying to help in recovery instead of as a period of darkness we want to forget about. We stop thinking about our lives in terms of what we don't have and begin to appreciate the gifts we receive every day. We know that to keep this feeling of freedom, we'll need to keep applying what we've learned in the previous steps. Step, 10's gives, step 10 gives us the means to do that.